So I actually recently had a photographer friend of mine ask me when I use each of my lenses that I have at what point during the wedding day and why am I choosing to use that specific lens to produce my style of work. And I thought this was such a good question because I think every photographer is gonna have different answers because there's really not a right and wrong here. Um, and that is the beauty of it, right? It's art and so it's gonna be pretty subjective. But I wanna share with you my five most used lenses on a wedding day and when at what point during the wedding day am I using them and why. I'm gonna be adding images here in the video of images that I've taken during wedding days with whatever lens I'm sharing and showcasing so that you can really visually see why I chose to use that lens during that part of the wedding day. So I think this is gonna be really fun. Let me know if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, let's dive in. So I'm gonna start with a 60 millimeter macro by Nikon, it's the 2.8. I'm gonna link all of these down below. Um, I've had this lens for a really long time. This is what I shoot all of my detail shots with. Now, you can use macro lenses as portrait lenses, and many people do. I know that the, I think it's like 105, the Nikon 105 or something along those lines, their macro version of that lens is a gorgeous portrait lens. I personally don't use this lens for portraits. I've tried it in the past. I didn't love the outcome. And so I strictly use this for details. So rings, boutonnieres, shoes, the flat lays, stuff like that. And so um, at that point, I will sometimes take it out for shots of the hand, if the bride is holding her veil, things like that. And so it can have a really, really gorgeous effect. Um, obviously you're able to get really, really close to details and that's why I love it. I didn't go for one of the more expensive macro lenses because as a wedding photographer, I decided that it was so few images on the wedding day that I didn't want to spend $1,500 to take 20 pictures. Whereas some lenses in my gear lineup you will see are more expensive, but I do use them so much so that I think it's worth it. So that's what I use my 60 millimeter for. Next up we have the 35 millimeter. 35 millimeter 1.4 by Nikon. And I love this for a couple of things during the wedding day. Now this has actually been on my camera probably the most of any lens this year. And that's because it's just really versatile. Not only are you able to fit more people in the frame, it's a, it's a little bigger than of course your 50 millimeter or anything tighter, but why I like it is because the 35 millimeter on a full frame camera body is gonna be as close to being true to your eyesight. So whatever you're seeing and it just, when it looks beautiful and it's in proportion, it doesn't look distorted or anything crazy, that's you know your eyesight. And so sometimes when you take pictures, if it's a wide angle lens, it can sometimes distort things or make things appear larger than they really were, which sometimes we want, sometimes we don't want. The 35 doesn't do that. It's just beautiful. There's not a lot of distortion. So I like to use this for taking landscape shots of a venue, taking group shots of families and the bridal party, um, and then also getting a little bit of a backed up shot for the bride and groom. When I'm doing bride and groom portraits, I often wanna put this one on one of my cameras for at least part of the portrait session so that I can get some like scene setting backed up type images. Next up, we have the 85 millimeter 1.4 by Nikon. This, I've actually made a whole video just about this lens because I love this lens so much. It used to be my favorite lens and I will share what my new favorite lens is in this video today, but this is definitely still a runner up. Love this lens. I think it's dreamy for portraits um, of the bride alone, your bride and groom, or if you have space, the details and the reception area. So the reason why it's not on my camera more is because it is rather zoomed in. So if you're working in a tight space and you're trying to get pictures of, you know, three or four bridesmaids getting ready, it's pretty unlikely that I'll be able to have the 85 millimeter on my camera because it does zoom in. So when you're outside, when you're shooting in a low light reception, it's outside, if it's candlelit, the 85 millimeter is gonna be lovely because it has the ability to open its aperture to 1.4, which is incredible. And most you know, zoom lenses, my 24 to 70, my 70 to 200, those lenses don't have that ability. The widest aperture those have is a 2.8. And so that's why this is gonna be lovely for when you have space to get that dreamy fine art look. And that leads me to my new favorite lens, the 58 millimeter 1.4 by Nikon. Just beautiful, it's just beautiful. It's like the 50 millimeter and the 85 millimeter got together, 
and made a beautiful lens baby. And it's lovely because the bokeh is lovely, the focusing is snappy, it's sharp, it's just where you want it, but it has almost like a film-esque quality in terms of the way that the image falls off from being in focus to out of focus. Don't know how to explain it other than to just put lots of pictures here and show you why it's beautiful. You can get away with having this on your camera in tighter spaces as well. And so I will often have the 58 millimeter on one camera and the 35 millimeter on the other. Between those two, I'm pretty much covered for the majority of the wedding day unless I'm at the ceremony, which leads me to the 70 to 200. So I have a 70 to 200 2.8 by Nikon. And this lens is so lovely for if you're trying to get just either epic compression in your images, um, you know, just get that really amazing bokeh in the background, or of course, if you're far away from your subjects. So um, I use this during ceremonies, during, you know, ring exchanges, things where I don't want to get too close. I don't want to interrupt the moment, but I want those images. Or when I just want the portrait to be really dramatic and different. So I'm using the 70 to 200 either when I don't want to be super close to things where maybe I'm not even allowed to be close to things like during a ceremony or when I want a really dramatic compression effect where the background is just super buttery and the subjects just look cut out like so perfect and sharp. Really awesome effect, um, a little bit different. Sometimes I do this for my maternity clients if I want just a more dramatic effect um, or if I'm in a situation where the background is a little bit distracting and I don't really want to incorporate it, I would rather just blur it out completely. The 70 to 200 can do a really fantastic job at doing that. So those are the two main times during a wedding day that I'm using this lens. So for the most part, I use primes whenever possible. And I simply do this because I like the images that I get out of a prime better. I think that they're sharper and I love the aperture capabilities that primes have over, you know, maybe a variable aperture zoom lens or even a fixed aperture zoom lens like my 70 to 200. Um, but I want to hear from you guys. I want to know when are you using each of these lenses on your wedding days? And, you know, do you have a favorite lens? Are you still eyeing up one of these lenses and looking to buy one? I would love to hear it. Let's keep the conversation going in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button. Let me know that you liked it. And of course, I will see you guys next week for another tutorial. Bye guys.